Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Gareth here from tastetubes.com. Since its first release, Photoshop has structured and organized many creative features in panels. In this tutorial, we are going to take a closer look at workspace panels in Adobe Photoshop. In the last episode, I give an introduction to the Photoshop interface where I introduce the panels. In this video, I'm going to show you how to customize the panel layout to create a more comfortable, tailored workspace for you. Later on, I will also be recommending a workspace that I use that I find really effective. So here we are where we left off in the previous video with this document open. To begin, I just want to close this document as I don't want anything to distract us here. Okay, so over here on the right, we have a slim panel that contains panels that are represented by these icons. Also, we have some panels that are already visible to use. As stated in the previous video, these panels contain various tool options and properties regarding objects in the canvas area. If we click the icons, we can reveal the panels inside. What you will soon discover is that these panels, like the control panel along the top here, are essential in order to produce work in Photoshop. In order to have a swift workflow in this program, it will help to have a comfortable setup of these panels. Okay, so at the moment, we are looking at the default setup for the Essentials Panel workspace. Now, if we look at the top right of our interface, just above the control panel, we can see we have the word Essentials, and next to this is a drop-down icon. If we press this, we can see a list. Here we have 3D, motion, painting, photography, and so on. As we start to select these, we will notice the panel layout changing. Now, this is Photoshop attempting to create an ideal workspace for a given task. If you're using Photoshop for just painting, then by clicking on Painting, Photoshop will offer you an ideal panel setup for painting in Photoshop. If you're using Photoshop for just typography, then by clicking on Typography, Photoshop will offer you an ideal panel setup for typography in Photoshop, and so on. So I'm going to click back on Essentials, and we are back to the minimal panel setup on the side. So this time, we are going to again come to the top right and click on Essentials, but notice this time at the top we have one called GD Workspace. Well, if I click this, watch what happens. Just like earlier, the panels have changed, but this time they have changed to my personal setup. And as you can see, the panels are arranged slightly different to the other panel setups. In Photoshop, you can customize your panel setup and save them. These panel setups are called workspaces, and should someone else use a different workspace, then you can always come back to your own workspace in future. So this is my workspace, and this is what I find works really well for me. Now, I actually use a lot of the tools in Photoshop, so I have arranged my panels in this way. I have arranged the panels in a column. They are clearly visible at all times, and the various panels are arranged in accordance to their context. I have all my color panels at the top. I have my layers, brush presets, and paths under this. And I have my character and paragraph panel at the bottom. So now I'm going to show you how you can create a workspace just like this. So before we begin, I'm going to come back to the top of my workspace setup and click Essentials. This is going to put us back at the default setup. So what I'm going to do is now click on a panel icon to reveal the contents and then carefully click and hold the panel tab name and drag it out like so. What we just did there was separate the panel. So I'll do this once again with the second panel. I'll click it to pull it out and click and drag the tab out like so. Now I'll come to the visible panels and continue to drag out the tabs on these until I have no panels left on the right and they are all scattered like so. Now we can see they all exist in their own panels. What I'm about to do next is join these panels together in a particular order. So I'm going to start with the swatches panel. So let's find the color panel and here it is. Once I have found this, I'm going to click on the tab, not the top bar, but the tab, make sure of this. Then I'm going to click and drag this into the swatches panel like so. And what you're looking for is the blue line inside the panel, not on the top, 
but inside. On release, you will notice the tab is now placed into the swatches panel, and that is now, in essence, one panel group. Great. So I'm going to do this again, but this time I'm going to drag the Paths tab into the Layers panel. Drag the Adjustments tab into the Swatches panel, and drag the Properties tab into the same panel. If I put my mouse cursor over the bottom right of the panel, I can click and drag out to expand like so. And then simply click the X to close all the other tabs. So now I am left with just two panel groups. So by clicking on the top bar of each panel group, I'm going to drag these into the middle like so. This time, I'm going to click and hold on the top bar of the Layer and Paths tab and begin to move it around like so. But this time, move this just over the bottom of the panel group containing the Swatches panel. What I'm looking for is a blue line across the bottom. When I see this, I will release. This will then snap that panel group to the bottom, and they are now joined. And if I click and hold the top bar of the top panel group, you can see they now move together. Excellent. So now I have a neat little panel group. Now before we attempt to save this panel workspace, we want to add more panels to it that we are going to use. For example, let's come up to the top main menu and click Window. Scroll down to Character. What should appear is a panel containing the character panel. Just like earlier, I'm going to click on the tabs to drag out and separate them. Just like earlier, I'm going to click and drag the Paragraph tab into the Character tab. Then click and drag the top bar to join the bottom of my other panels. Next, I will come back to and click Window. Scroll down to Brush Presets. What should appear is a panel containing the Brush and Brush Presets panels. Again, I'm going to click and drag out the tabs to separate them and drag the Brush and Brush Presets tab into my Layers panel. Now, if you wish to customize the order in which your tabs are arranged in each panel group, you can simply click and drag the tab to the left or the right like so. So now I'm happy with my panel set, I'm going to click and drag the top bar over to the top right hand side of the screen. And I'll drag it over until I can see a blue line on the side of the screen. When I do, I'll release and snap to fit the panels to the side of the screen like so. Now I am currently using Adobe CC 2014. This might not work on early versions. Now once you are happy with your panel setup, come to the top menu, click on Window, scroll down to Workspace, then come across, scroll down and click on New Workspace. Up will pop a window, I'm going to call this Workspace Tutorial Workspace and click Save. Now if we come to the top and click on the other workspaces, we can then come back again to activate the workspace we just created. Excellent! So that is how you can customize a workspace in Adobe Photoshop and save it. So now we have a nice workspace, we are ready to move on. In the next video, I'm going to talk about raster image principles. So I'll see you in the next video.